the resonant frequency of a room is the note at which the room wants to resound, it wants to sing. Uh, in the same way that uh, if you want to make a wine glass sing, it will always sing the same note. A room is an empty space and it has a note that belongs to it, it's resonant frequency. And so if you know how to stimulate uh, a room to sing, it's the one that will always come forth. You know. I've written a piece called Composition for London, which is a meeting point between the resonant frequencies of this space. So I spent six months living here, uh, working here, and working out the harmonies that belong to the space. And taking those resonant notes, those frequencies that come from the room, I've taught singers how to stimulate the specific harmonies. As it happens, there's an augmented fourth integrated into the architecture of Ealing House. And that interval, which is, for example, between a C and an F sharp or um, a D and an A flat, uh, is the forbidden interval. It's, it's something I've worked with before um, because of its importance in the history of music and the fact that it was forbidden by the Catholic Church for many centuries. Uh, there's lots of things in the show, and uh, it's rather too much work to summarize under a single banner. But there's this key piece, which is a new uh, resonance project performance. So I've been working for 10 years on a single resonance project, which is basically teaching singers how to stimulate the resonant frequencies of architecture and rooms, making them sing. And it's a very physical thing. I think it, one of the main problems with this series is that you can't really hear it uh, through speakers or watch it on a film. You have to be there and physically experience it. And at the heart of this show is a relatively uh, extraordinary opportunity to work with classical singers who will be here throughout the whole exhibition. And I've written a composition that is stimulating the very precise uh, harmonies that belong to this bit of 18th century Georgian uh, pompous architecture uh, to resound. And so the singers, to put it simply, are using the building like an instrument. Their voices stimulate resonance. And it's just like the singer becomes the tip of the finger whilst the room becomes the wine glass. You, know, you can't hear the tip of the finger vibrating. You just hear the glass. And that's what's happening when these, these people are singing. The second major work in the exhibition is, is called Devils. And it takes that augmented fourth that comes from the building. Um, and been through hundreds and hundreds of vessels, finding ones which resound at augmented fourths with each other. So I began by uh, listening to each of the pots and listening for its note and seeing if it was a note that I could use. If it was, I brought it together with the ensemble. And once I'd built my orchestra of vessels, I then was able to write music for them by attaching each microphone to the key of a keyboard. So if I play uh, the note on the keyboard, that turns on the microphone which amplifies the sound of the pot. And as a result, it creates a really fruitful compositional device, which essentially is like an instrument. Uh, what's new in this show is that I've made a new series of sculptures which are called recompositions. And that's where I've taken something like a violin, broken it down into its different parts and sliced through it at different angles and then recomposed it into new imagery. And it's sort of like a kind of physical cubism. All of the forms exist already in the object, but they're just being revealed uh, to create a new, uh, a new meaning. So it's something I've been thinking about whilst I've been making this show is that Frank Lloyd Wright said that architecture is about empty space. It's not about the walls and the ceilings. It's the spaces that it creates. And I think it's fair to say that empty space is at the heart of a lot of these works. Um, it's the empty space that resounds uh, in the architecture. It's the empty space that creates the note. It's not the object itself. And then in these two-dimensional sculptures, it's a kind of crystallization of empty space. It's making visible something which we normally can't perceive.